Now in this section, I'm going to demonstrate a very basic lab on using VLAN ACLs. So I'm going to take one switch, which is my switch one, is connecting five different hosts. Actually, in my lab, I'm using five routers. Actually, they are they are working as as my routers, or you can you can just connect to your physical computers as well. I got five devices connected, and out of that five devices, we have three devices in the VLAN 10 connecting to port number one, two, three of switch one, and then port number five and five. They are using 192, 168, two dot network, and and we have an inter VLAN routing as well. So let me quickly uh, verify the configurations first. And the task here is I want to ensure that any traffic coming from 1.1 or 1.2, they should not be able to access the VLAN 20 users. So the traffic coming from source 1.1, source 1.2, accessing any destination, I don't. I want to ensure that this traffic from 1.1, 1.2 should not enter into VLAN 20, but 1.3 can access the VLAN 20 users information. So I'm making it very simple. I'm not going to define any destination port number, but you can you can also include that extended ACLs concept as well. So let me quickly show you what is my configuration here. I'm going to my router four. Okay, this is my router four. I'll start with switch one. So this is my switch, which is connecting to all those devices. And it's connecting on the same ports, which I mentioned just now, connecting to five devices. If I verify show CDP neighbor, you can see all the five devices. I'm connecting router one, two, three, four, five, and they're connected to each other. And if I go to router one and verify the communication between the IP address, whatever the IP address I'm using here. So on router one, I'm using the IP address of 192.168.1.1. And I'll try to communicate with 192.168.1.2, which is my second host. And I'm able to communicate with 1.3 as well. Why? Because if you try to see here, if I show VLAN as per our diagram, I already configured port number 123 in the VLAN 10, so which means now the switch is pre-configured with VLAN 10 with port number 123 in the VLAN 10 and 4 and 5 in the VLAN 20. Let me show you. 4 and 5 in the VLAN 20. So I got both the VLANs created, VLAN 10 and 20. And I have routers already pre-configured with IP addresses. And if I go to router 4 and router 5, the hosts which are belonging to VLAN 20, let's go to router 4 to verify our configurations. So router 4 will be having an IP address of, so on the router 4, if I verify show IP interface brief, and the router 4 is already configured with 2.1 IP address. It's belong to VLAN 20 here. And I will try to ping to the other host in the same VLAN, 192.162.1 and 2.2, which is router 5. I should see the replies coming. So now the host in the VLAN 20 can communicate with each other and the host in the VLAN 10 can communicate with each other by default because they're in the same VLAN as well as they are in the same network. Now, I want to ensure that these two uh, VLANs should communicate with each other so that after that we'll apply our VLAN ACL to deny the specific host with in between the communication between the VLANs. So to do that, what I need to do is I need to go to all these routers I'm using. I need to assign the default gateway. The first thing, in order to have inter VLAN routing, we need to create SVIs. So I have to create SVI for VLAN 10 here. I have to create SVI for VLAN 20. Let's verify do I have the SVIs or not. If it is not there, I'll try to create it again. So I already pre-configured these things. To save the time, probably you can see VLAN 10 and 20 are already pre-configured with IP addresses 192.168.1.100 and 192.168.2.100 as the gateways. So SVIs are pre-configured. Now the next thing we need to configure that SVI as a gateway on the host connecting in the LAN, which means on the router 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, on the router 1, if I verify show IP route, because I'm using these routers as a host, what I'm going to do is I'm going to disable the routing feature. I'll say no IP routing, just to use my uh, router as a host. And then I need to set here. I need to say what is my default gateway. It is 192.168.1.100. So for all the users who belongs to VLAN 100, 
one will and 10 below having the gateway of 192.168.1.100 now the same commands i have to copy paste on the router 2 router 3 let's go to router 2 this is my router 2 here so i'm giving no ip routing ensuring that there is no routing required because i'm not using this a router as a router I'm, I'm going to use it as a host I don't have a physical computers here so I'm going to use routers acting as my host here now the same thing I need to do on the router 3 as well on the router 3 I'm going to say the same command now on the router 4 and router 5 the gateway address will be I need to say no IP routing and the IP default gateway will be 192 168.2.100 now this is something what you know from the basic uh, inter -land routing concepts there is nothing new but this is the basic setup which you need to have before you try and implement our task here so that's what I'm going to do so I'll say no IP routing so on the router 5 I have given the IP default gateway address and no IP routing so once I do all these things, I need to ensure that there should be inter VLAN routing communication. If I try to communicate with 1.1 host from router 5, that is from VLAN 20, I can communicate. So 2.1 anyway, it belongs to the same VLAN. So if I try to trace to 1.1 from 2.1, you can see the packet goes to gateway and then reaches here. Now, up to this point, I have a successful inter VLAN routing communication between both the VLANs now what is the next task is I want I'm coming to the main task here the main lab applying and verifying the VLAN ACLs now my requirement is I want to ensure that these two hosts the first two hosts 1.1 1.2 they should not access any of the resources or anything belonging to VLAN 20 so that's the reason I'm not going to give any destination so I'm just using a standard basic ACL whereas 1.3 can access so I'm not 1.3 is not in the denial list which means 1.3 will be allowed to communicate with the VLAN 20 users so I'm going to use a VLAN ACLs in this scenario so the first statement the first thing I need to create an ACL which is going to match these two networks so that is for the first thing I'm going to do and once we do that the second thing we need to do is we need to create a VLAN access map which is more like a route map statement and which is going to define the action to drop whatever is matched in that ACL and then finally we need to apply the VLAN filter on VLAN 20 so on the VLAN 20 we are going to say anything matching these two networks must be dropped and all the remaining has to be permitted so it's a complete three-step configuration similar to your route maps so the configuration wise I'll go to switch one so as of now all are communicating so I'm going to create an access list so before I create an access list I'll try to verify whether I do have any access list or not so I have some access list so I'll try to remove them so ensuring that they don't interfere with our configurations no access list 12 So I'm going to create an access list which is 5 and it's going to permit 192.168.1.1 without any destination permit 1.2 so I'm going to permit in the ACL why because I'm going to drop them in the VLAN access map so the second statement I'll say VLAN access map any name for the access map and then you can use the sequence number generally just like a route maps and then I'm going to say match IP address what is the IP address? The ACL name, which is Phi, which is going to match those two networks. And then I have a command called action. Now either I can drop or I can forward. So I'm going to say drop the packets, whatever matches. And after that, I can say exit. And then I'm going to say all the remaining has to be permitted. So I'm not going to define anything. I'm just leaving it blank. VLAN access mark CCI 20. Okay, so the next thing now if you verify the commands what commands are configured here you can see VLAN access map matching the IP address 
those two networks and it's going to drop and then all the remaining just leaving blank now applying we need to say vlan a filter the command starts vlan filter and the name of the filter what is the name of the filter we created here the cci that access map name and then we need to say vlan list now here we are going to define to which vlan it is going to apply whether you want to apply for all the vlans or you want to apply only specific to that vlan so in my scenario i'm going to apply for vlan 20. so vlan 20 anything coming from source 1.1 1.2 should be denied done so now we've implemented now if you want to verify the set of commands what we configured do show history now this is the command set of commands which we configured okay so verification for verification what i'll do is i'll try to communicate from router 4 the last time if you try to verify mm, i should be from router 4 which is belonging to vlan 20 host the router 4 which is 2.1 i'm trying to access i'm trying to ping to 1.1 from 1.1 you can see the communication is not happening and the reason is the vlan acl and if i try to access 1.2 i should not communicate that is what exactly but if i try to verify communicating with 1.3 which is the third host which is defined in the permit list it should be able to ping you can see so now if i go and check on switch one so for verification what i can do is i can use this command show vlan access map cci you can see it is matching the acl file and the action is going to take its drop so the ACL file is going to include those 1.1 and 1.2 host and then I can use this command like VLAN show VLAN filter access map CCI and this command is going to define this filtering is applied on which VLAN it has been applied on this so now what I'll do is I'll try to remove that VLAN list uh, VLAN filter and just to ensure that okay if I remove that I should see everything back to normal that's what i'm expecting so i just removed that vlan filter now i'll go to router 4 once again for verification the last time i was able to communicate is 1.3 this time also but the last time when i tried to communicate is 1.1 i was not able to communicate because the vlan acl was dropping the packets now if i once i remove that vlan acl now you can see everything is back to normal so this way we can confirm we can implement a one basic lab for verification so if you want to make it a little bit a uh, couple of scenarios you can also make where you can define where you can even tell that okay like i'll give some couple of scenarios for you for practice what you can do is you can match an acl which is going to define a traffic coming from 1.1 going to 2.1 if it is telnet traffic i want to ensure that it should drop or you can even define any traffic coming from 1.1 going to the specific uh, 3.1 or it can be HTTP traffic it should be that so it's like more like an ACL statements you can use it and one more thing I'll show you here if I go to switch one not only that even I can create a Mac ACL where I can say Mac access list and in that access list I can say Mac actually extended and some name let's say Mac and in that I can even define I can say permit uh, host I can define a specific MAC address filtering so I can even define the packets to filter based on the source and destination MAC addresses not only based on the IP it's going to do it it's going to do based on the MAC as well so I can say MAC let's say 1111 dot 1111 dot 1111 let's say and after that you can say any permit host I have to define as a host just like we do over there and if I see the if I use the question mark here you can see you can say simply any any destination like that so once I define this now if I say VLAN access map and then I can say the name is CCNP and I can say match IP address and I can even define the name of the Mac. 
so I should I should not use it as a match IP address I should use as a match MAC address and then I have to define this as so this way we can even match not only the IP packets we can also match your layer 2 packets with a specific source specific destinations